I want you to stop for just one second and I want you to go find yourself a calendar. Now it can be any kind of calendar you want, just as long as it tells you dates. Now I want you to go to the Sunday before this video is being published and if you went to the right one, that date should say March 29th. Now this date is actually a very important one in Japanese American history and it's one that in my opinion we all should really remember. But it's understandable that most of you probably don't know why it's so important and if you're one of these people, stick around because you're about to find out. What's going on everybody? My name is Daniel Yaguchi and in today's video we have something kind of fun planned for you. Now before we hop into it, I just want to say I hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy, and taking care of yourselves. I also want to thank you for all the continued support you've been showing us throughout the past couple of weeks. We all really appreciate it. Now like I said at the beginning of this video, this past Sunday was March 29th. Now the reason this date is so important is because on March 29th, 1942, Lieutenant General John L. DeWitt issued Public Proclamation Number 4 which basically gave all West Coast residents of Japanese American ancestry 48 hours to evacuate their homes. Now as a way to pay tribute to this, we reached out to some of our Generation Z volunteers and we asked them to participate in a little challenge. What we asked them to do was we asked them to pack up their lives using no more than two suitcases and instead of giving them 48 hours, we only gave them 48 minutes. In this video, you guys are gonna see them participate in this challenge and hear some of the thoughts they had along the way. So if that sounds interesting, let's hop into it. Hello, my name is Hana Goto. What is up guys, it's your boy Bearclaw, aka Ethan Gan. Hi everyone, my name is Kayleen Hino. And I'm doing the Pack Up Your Life Challenge uh, by Kizuna. So definitely I will be making sure everything is compact. So definitely with the clothes, I'll be making sure it's all rolled up and compact in um, the suitcase. Probably have to figure out some other things as we go along. I'm gonna focus on the essentials, so clothes, sanitary, and not focus on electronics because I'm doing it based on the time period. Is rolling up all my clothes as tightly as I can. That's my way of conserving as much space as I can have. You know, whenever I pack for trips and stuff, I have to have like lists and like, or if I'm like moving, like like in, like I moved into my apartment or whatever, I have to have lists. So. That's one thing I'll probably do. Underwear, I think, is very important. T-shirts, something warm as well, like jackets or hoodies. These two blankets that I have had since the day I was born, I literally cannot go without it. It is always the first thing that I grab whenever I'm leaving my home for more than like a week. Some type of warm jacket or warm cloths. I usually bring like a sweatshirt or some type of like, um, how would you call it? Like kind of like a waterproof fluffier jacket or even a blanket too. It would probably be like my baby pictures. Um, that's something I take with me wherever I go. Um, my camera, if they would like let me, cause I, I just, I need to have my camera. I definitely probably take a couple books, like Buddhism books, that I always take with me wherever I go. I'm not really sure, so that's why I probably need like a good like 10 minutes to figure out like what I need. Um, so that'll be like 10 out of my 48 minutes, it's just me making a list. I have a list going on right here. Uh, so the top ones I have are pictures, so like memory books that I have, so that's going to be in there. Uh, some uh, The other one is going to be like jewelry, so things that my grandmother um, and mom have given me. Um, so that kind of stuff, and then I have clothes. So it's more of the top of the list, and then we might have to rearrange and see what fits and what does not. I think it's better to use a bigger suitcase than a smaller suitcase. One, because I don't have to fill up the bigger suitcase if I don't have to. Um, I have all the space that I can use if I, if I really want to. But with a smaller suitcase, once I reach that max capacity, I'm done. I cannot pack anymore, there's nothing else I can do. Um, but with a bigger suitcase, you know, I'm given all these extra options to do what I can with it. And as long as I can lift it myself, carry it myself, I feel like I'm set to go. I only have one suitcase here at my apartment. <laughs> um, it's like a medium-sized suitcase. 
but I figure a smaller suitcase would be better than a bigger one because I don't know it's something you're gonna have to like carry and lug around and whatnot but we'll see how it goes While I was packing, not gonna lie, I was a little stressed just thinking about putting everything in um, a couple suitcases. So basically putting my life in these suitcases. I uh, thought that was challenging and just, I guess, overwhelming to think about. Um, it's pretty stressful. I didn't really know exactly what to bring. Um, I didn't really know exactly what I should have brought over because I had lim very limited space, but yeah, oh, the lighting's pretty bad. Um, so I was pretty stressed out. There were a few things that happened while I was packing. I think the main thing that you probably noticed in the video was that I had a lot of cats running around and they were hopping into my suitcase, playing with my suitcase a lot. Um, so for me, that kind of made me a little bit distracted. There was times when I was like just looking in my closet and I was kind of lost and like I didn't know what to grab. I was just like, oh, I have so many options, but I don't know what I need or what I want. While I was packing, I kind of just like knew where everything was because I'm in my apartment so it's kind of small and it's easy to just be like okay boom this boom that like everything that I want to take everywhere with me wherever like I live and I'm a very forgetful person sometimes and so you know that thought that's like am I forgetting something and I packed in like 20 minutes so I was kind of like what am I forgetting what am I forgetting and I went over my list so I was like, okay, I, I guess that's it. I hate to interrupt this video, but I have one quick announcement to make. Due to all the COVID-19 craziness, we understand that a lot of college students are moving back home. Because of this, we've decided to extend the application deadline of our internship program. So if you haven't had a chance to apply yet, don't stress because there's still time. If you guys want to apply, the application is going to be linked down below. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the program, go visit our website at GoKizuna and click on our NCI page. That website's gonna be linked down below as well. Now, let's get back to the video. Um, was it challenging? Yes. It was pretty difficult, but I like shoved a bunch of random stuff inside my bag. Uh, I would say yes, it was challenging. Uh, there were many choices I feel like that I had to make to or determine what was valuable to me and what was not. I actually found this to be a little bit challenging, more so in the sense that I was unsure where I was going to be, what the weather was going to be like, um, who I was going to be living with, and what I was allowed to bring. So that made me have to think about a lot of different scenarios and I just had to kind of wing it in a sense that I just brought whatever I could or whatever I wanted and if they say I can't have it when I get there that's fine you know I have backups to my backups. It was challenging like I said because of the whole what am I forgetting like I kept questioning like do I need a blanket do I should I pack my laptop? I guess not, because would we even have electricity for it? Um, like, I just realized, like, was I supposed to pack shampoo and a toothbrush? <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, some people think, like, baby pictures are unnecessary, but they're really important to me, so I bring them. I don't have that many clothes because long story but I got them a lot of them stolen if I had 40 hours instead of 40 minutes I think it would actually be harder for me to pack because I'd have too much time to overthink and like oh maybe I need this or maybe I don't need that and like switching out some things that I might have packed and then regretted it later I don't know but at the same time it's like then I could have processed this more um, but I don't think anything can really prepare you for things like that. I think if I had more time, I'd be even more indecisive on what to bring. Just because, um, personally, I, I do find value in some of the things that I have. Just because they were gifts from 
uh, relatives or from friends that I really do value. So I think uh, with more time, it would have been difficult because I would have been yeah, even more indecisive. If this scenario had changed to 48 hours rather than 48 minutes, I think there would have been a whole lot of changes that I would have made. I would also make arrangements to bring my pets with me so that way they would be um, taken care of and I wouldn't have to worry about them being left behind or with someone else or anything like that. I also probably would have shipped things ahead of time to um, the location that I'm moving to just to make ease of traveling in the future a little bit less hectic because I'm not having to worry about the weight of bags, having to keep tabs on all of them, make sure that they're all with me and not losing anything behind. If I had 48 hours instead, yes, I think if I had time to plan it with my family as well, we can utilize the space inside the suitcases much more efficiently to bring the most stuff over to the relocation camps. So if I were alive during 1942, there would probably be a lot of feelings that I would have felt about this um, scenario. I think the main one I would have felt would be the feeling of loneliness because I probably would have felt abandoned and kind of neglected by my country. I probably would have also felt attacked because they were being they were being racist and because I had Japanese blood they assumed that my loyalties would align with the Japanese. More likely I probably would have also added in like more mentos to help kind of keep me sane because during that time of loneliness and isolation and neglect I need something to help bring up my spirit so that way I'm not kind of digging myself into a hole and feeling left behind almost. So like I'm a family of five um, and I have a younger brother and a twin brother so and thinking how stressful it would have been for probably my parents to think of things to bring for us as well. Uh, I think that would have been difficult. I was only thinking about myself and what things I needed to bring, but I think in a family setting, I think it would have been really difficult. I would have felt angry, but I wouldn't express it. Um, I feel like a lot of Japanese Americans don't really didn't really express how they felt about what happened during the time back in 1942. I would just ask them, what should I bring? And based off of that, so. If I was alive during 1942, I don't know what I would have felt. I definitely would have panicked a little bit. I think I would have made the choices in a similar way. I would have written the list. I would have taken all of these things too. When I went to school in Hawaii, we had that fake missile um, crisis that happened. And I was in bed and I got the alert. I was like, okay and so i messaged like my floor mates and i was like um is anyone like like what are, in the building what are we supposed to do so i got my jacket my portable charger my water bottle my phone and then i remember thinking should i bring canned food but then i just left i think in things like that you don't really know how you're gonna react until you're in that position i definitely like if you asked me how i would have reacted to like let's say I thought a missile was inbound to where I lived, I thought I would be a little bit more level-headed, but I really wasn't. This was a really interesting challenge. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Yeah, I'll catch you guys later. See you at summer camps. And that's it for this week's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave us a like down below and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Go Kizuna. Also, don't forget, we have extended the application deadline for our internship program. So if you want to apply, the application is going to be linked down below. And if you want to learn a little bit more about the program, go visit our website at GoKizuna and click on the NCI page. That's going to be linked down below as well. That's it for me today. We'll see you in the next one.